Hey everybody, Anthony here, and today we're talking about the Ergodox. So a few weeks ago, I uploaded my first video in this series, which was a look at some of the components that come with it. Right after that video, I started the assembly process, which took a few hours. It's not that complicated. If you are new to soldering, I will say that it will probably take you a bit more time because the SMD components are a bit of a challenge if you've never done them before. I have linked a fantastic video by Dave at the EEV blog that talks all about soldering and how to do this small component work uh, because it is a bit of a challenge if you've only done through hole before but once you get into it you'll realize that smd is very very nice because you don't have to keep flipping over the boards every time you want to solder something in it's much more efficient in that way so when soldering the diodes onto the boards you have to make sure that the cathode is pointed towards the square pad on the pcb if not, the switch just won't work. And if you have bad eyes, I'd recommend that you use a magnifying glass or even a, a small microscope to make sure that you've uh, gotten them all in the right direction. And that'll just save you from some troubles in the long run when you plugged it in and it doesn't work. Besides the diodes, everything else is through hole and it's very easy to solder. you just like any other kit or a project that you've done before. Just stick the component in, flip the board over, solder it. There really isn't that much trouble you can get into. With assembling the Ergodox, all the parts are very straightforward to install. The manual on their website is fantastic. I think maybe the only small issue you might run into is if you make a mistake trimming the wires on the small USB pass-through because they are very thin and brittle. Even at that, I think it should be a fairly easy build, even if you're new to soldering. Soldering isn't anything scary, and I recommend if you just want to start learning to get a small kit before spending a few hundred dollars on the Ergodox kit. Try it out, see if you like the, doing the work. Uh, if you don't, there, there are assembly services available, but I've been soldering for a long time, so I, I feel right at home assembling the Ergodox. It's a very fun project to do, and you get to learn how a keyboard works because otherwise you just buy it at the store and plug it in. But this way you get to program the microcontroller, you get to have fun soldering down all the components and seeing how they work. You even get a few extra components to play around with after. Uh, I believe there's one of each for everything. So you get an extra switch, which is cool. And you can play around with that later and maybe use it in a future project. So as for the microcontroller, it is just a regular Teensy. And they're using a Teensy because it can emulate a keyboard. And it's pretty much the same chip that's on the USB rubber ducky, which is pretty awesome. You can just program it with uh, the Ergodox firmware and then load up any layout that you want. Mastrop does have a layout configuration tool. However, you can download the source code for that and modify it yourself in any compatible IDE. The two parts of the keyboard connect with a TRRS cable, which is the same sort of cable that's used in most headsets for smartphones. I think one of the most difficult parts of assembling the Ergodox is probably the case of all things. It's very easy to get dust lodged underneath it. And once you've done that, you have to sort of take it apart again to get any dust out. If you get the aluminum top for this, it's really not an issue because you can't see through it anyways. As for the keycaps, everything is PBT. They are spherical keycaps, which are different than the normal uh, cylindrical keycaps that we've come to expect from Morse keyboards. The Ergodox kit does not come with any sort of home row keys with nubs on them. So for your F and J, it might be a little challenging to find those, I opted for using just a regular key set that I had laying around that was also a PBT. So I've been typing on it for a couple of weeks now, and it's actually extremely comfortable. There's very minimal travel uh, between keys, so your hands don't get fatigued as fast. But you will find it very fatiguing over the first few days, because there is a bit of a learning curve when you're switching from a regular staggered layout to this sort of straight layout. However, once you've gotten used to it, it's much, much more comfortable than a regular keyboard. Of course, I will have my full review out in a couple of weeks once I've had even more time to get used to this board. And until then, I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys later.